Okay, event three analysis, example one, video two. Okay, in this video, okay, you will learn, okay, after you have learned your initiating event, your safety function, and how to calculate the safety frequency, okay, your failure and success frequency, okay, we will look further in what is this alphabet is about, okay. So, basically, this alphabet is the uh, consequence from this initiating event. Okay, as you can see, okay, for your initiating event is A, uh, what we call as an A, okay. So, this A, okay, will follow through the success branch. So, from initiating event A, basically, in your first safety function, you have your successful branch, okay. So, if your branch is successful, you don't need to write the remaining alphabet. So, this is A, then followed by B. But B is in successful branch. So, C also in successful branch, followed by D also in successful branch. So, your consequence is only A. Meaning that, okay, from this alphabet, we know, okay, from, uh, we know about, that all your safety function is success okay so just initiating event is being labeled okay so this is a so the result is you can continue the operation okay we look the second one you have your initiating event a then b is successful c is successful but okay at D, you have your failure. Okay. So, at D, you have your failure. So, your label will be A, D. Okay. Because your E is also successful. Okay. So, if your model is successful, so it's only labeled as A, D. Okay. So, A, B successful, C successful, D is failure, and E also failure. So, the label is A, D, E. Okay? The same goes to the remaining of alphabet. So, you have your A, but at B, now all are failure. So, as you can see, all this remaining label will have A, B. Because it will show that at the beginning of your safety function B, all of these are failed. Okay. But, as you can see, there is no alphabet C. Because, at this stage, all these consequences are success in the second safety function. So, there is no alphabet C here. Okay. As compared to the bottom one okay you have your a b c a b c and also this is also a b c meaning that a and b safety function is also fail for this event okay so you have a b c a b c d and finally a b c d e means all of safety function stages have been failed okay it is a it have a failure in each of the safety function. So, A, B, C, D, E, this is the failure frequency for this event. Okay, what is the event? It is the operator shut down the reactor. Okay, then this is the result based on the final safety function. As you can see, if the operator shut down the reactor, okay, if the reactor shut down the reactor, you can see that the uh, the process is shut down okay shut down but if the operator has failed in this stage okay at the e stage okay all e stage okay you can see all the label with the end of e meaning that it's failed during the safety function of e 
will have a runaway process. Okay, it will have a runaway process. What does it mean by runaway? Means the process is still going on, but with high temperature. So the process is a, uh, in a runaway condition. Okay, so you have your shutdown and also runaway condition. Part of you can continue the operation. Okay, as you can see inside this events for analysis you can have three different condition when your opera process can be continued the first one is a meaning that obvious the first step okay your high temperature alarm is already function then your operator also notice then you can continue the operation okay because the operator already restart the cooling water okay so there is no runaway or high temperature condition anymore okay the second function is when the operate uh, the process uh, the safety function is only fail at b okay when the high temperature alarm is failed but the operator notice and he restart the cooling water so you can still continue your operation okay the third part okay this is very interesting okay when the condition is you can have your continued operation after you have failed in your b and c safety function what is your b and c the first one you have failed your high temperature alarm okay then your operator also failed to notice the high temperature but suddenly your operator can restart the cooling water so that you can continue the operation Okay, by mathematics, this is all about the consequence and the result from the initiating event and your safety function. However, in a real event, okay, in a real case, this statement is not true. Okay, because if your high temperature alarm is failed and your operator also failed to notice the high temperature condition, how can he, can, uh, how can he restart the cooling water? Okay, basically this event is not exist. Okay, this event is not exist because once the operator fail to notice the high temperature, he can, uh, how can he notice and start the cooling water? Okay, so in a logical way of thinking, you can only have these two type of operation. Once when your high temperature already function. The second one, when your high temperature is failed to function, but your operator notice it during the process monitoring. Okay, then he can start the cooling water flow. Okay, so this is how the labeling will help you to identify which step of your safety function is failed and success. So, after you have your, all your results, then you can calculate what is your frequency rate. What is your frequency, okay, your failure or your event frequency for shutdown and runaway. Okay, so for shutdown, you just sum up all your shutdown event. 1, 2, 3. Okay, so 0 0.22, 0 0.01, and 0 0.005. Then you have your shutdown occurrence per year. This is your event frequency. Okay. So for the total event rate analysis, you have your 0 0.225 occurrence per year for shutdown condition. Meaning that in every five year, at least there are one occurrence of shutdown. Okay. Same goes to a runaway process. So, by calculation, it shows that the occurrence of runaway process is occurred 0 0.025 per year or around 10 years, uh, once per 10 years. Alright? So, this is how event rate analysis help you to identify the frequency and your, uh, the, uh, the, your success frequency or your failure frequency for some event. The continuation from example 1, 
maybe your safety function have been improved by high temperature shutdown okay the automatic uh, the automatic high temperature shutdown so if you have your another safeguard or another safety function then you can put it inside your inventory analysis so your development of inventory analysis have been changed okay after your high temperature alarm your operator note, operator monitoring operator uh, intervention then you have your high temperature shutdown before your manual shutdown by your operator okay so the frequency also will change okay basically you can have a lot more of your safety function okay but it should have been in sequence okay it should be have uh, it should have in sequence so that you can have your label right okay so your shutdown and runaway occurrence already changed as you can see the shutdown occurrence per year already reduced okay the occurrence per year is already reduced because of the additional high temperature shutdown safety function In next video, okay, I will show you how the cooling system, okay, how we develop inventory analysis in your cooling system and how we can calculate the occurrence and also the success and failure frequency.